Hi, this is Colonial Crossfire. I'm Casey Decker welcoming you to a special webisode edition of the program. The 2016 election is just days away. Everything we've been talking about here on our show for the last year is finally coming to a head. In a few months, a new president will enter the White House. But that's not the only change we'll see here in Washington. We'll also see some new faces in Congress and say goodbye to others. And while our attention has largely been on the presidential race, we here at Colonial Crossfire wanted to take a detailed look at how the legislative branch will change on November 8th. So first, let's talk about the House of Representatives. Right now, the House is dominated by the Republicans. That's unlikely to change this year. To take a majority, Democrats need to win 30 more seats than they already have, and there simply aren't enough battleground districts for that to realistically happen. However, the Senate is up for grabs. There are 34 races, one in each of the states highlighted here. Of those, these eight are considered battlegrounds. The rest of the seats will likely stay with the party that currently holds them, with one exception, Illinois. The Illinois seat is currently held by GOP Senator Mark Kirk. Kirk gained national attention last month when he called for Donald Trump to drop out of the presidential race. He made news again during a recent Senate debate when he commented on Democratic opponent Tammy Duckworth's Thai heritage, a remark he later apologized for. Recent polls have Duckworth with a double-digit lead over Kirk, making Illinois a likely pickup for the Democrats. So, if Duckworth wins and all the rest but these eight states are won by the incumbent party, that leaves the Senate at 46-46. That means if either party wins five of these eight, that party will have the majority. And, of course, a tie is possible. The most recent polls have Republicans leading in these five states and Democrats up in these three. In the real clear politics polling average, no candidate leads by more than five points. Even though the GOP has this slight polling advantage, most forecast models like those from the New York Times and data news site 538 expect the Democrats to take back the Senate. These races are very close, and you can be sure both parties will be on the edge of their seats until the results are official. Now, if the Democrats do take back the Senate, the new majority leader would almost certainly be New York Senator Chuck Schumer. Current minority leader Harry Reid is retiring. Reid's seat, by the way, one of the toss-ups, with polls giving a slight edge to Republican candidate Joe Heck and forecast models favoring Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto. Also note that one of the battleground states is Florida. The incumbent there is Republican Senator Marco Rubio, who of course recently lost a bid for the Republican presidential nomination. He had said during the primary he would not seek re-election in the Senate, but later changed his mind. Rubio currently has a five-point lead in the polls and is expected to retain his seat. One other senator who ran for president is seeking re-election. That's Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. He is heavily favored to win his race. So, the Republicans will likely keep the House, and the Senate is anyone's game. The stakes are, as always, high for both parties. If the Senate turns blue, that could either help a President Clinton or obstruct a President Trump. If it stays red, Clinton would have to work with an opposition Congress, as President Obama has the last two years. Or, if Trump wins the White House, the GOP would have near total control, much like the Democrats did in Obama's first two years. Also remember this, the Senate confirms Supreme Court justices. Right now, the GOP-controlled Senate has refused to consider Obama's nominee Merrick Garland. Confirming a ninth judge will surely be a top issue in the coming weeks, no matter who wins the White House or the Senate. And it will surely be a topic of discussion here on Colonial Crossfire. Well. That will wrap things up for this webisode. When we come back next time, the election will be over, and Andrew Desiderio will be here to discuss it all with our panel of student political experts. So be sure to tune into that, and happy voting.